My name's Craig Bignall, I farm in Broome Hill with my wife Sarah Robinson, my dad Dan and mother Helen and we run a 75% um, crop and uh, merino sheep enterprise. Salinity has been a big issue for our family, like the, um, my great grandfather cleared this area in the 1950s and my dad did also. Uh, he probably saw it evolve in this land, which would be quite heartbreaking I'm sure, because it's where he started and, and he invested a lot in Weissalt banks, spent many hours bouncing around in the dust on a bulldozer, um, digging Weissalt banks to try and combat salinity and um, from there I think he went to sort of planting trees in large areas and belts, perhaps to a full circle of filling the same Weissalt banks in because uh, we've just sort of found that they weren't working and they're hampering productivity in a cropping phase so they've sort of been tipped in. So the creek lines, they um, become quite barren and we've fenced out creek lines which has helped visually I think um, but as far as fixing salinity in the creek line the fence doesn't hold the salt back unfortunately but um, the revegetation work uh, it gets something growing there is using some moisture and then that's extended out into the into the paddock with the SGSL sites with salt land grazing sites with the salt bush and then sort of evolving into lucerns and tall wheatgrass and perennials to try and sort of use that extra moisture rather than adding it to the salt water table that's sort of been our goal in this lower flat country. Yeah, so 2004 we established sort of our first salt bush, but it was um, on a broad acre scale, I guess. You um, we had a 50 hectare site that we just prepared like we were, putting a wheat crop in, sowed it a shotgun mix with everything we could find and chucked it in an air seeder just to try and work out what's going to work on our country. And the old man salt bush and the wavy leaf salt bush works for us in the, in the really salty areas. We've also learnt that lucerne is a good option in perhaps not so salty areas along with the tall wheat grass and blanche is also a good option. We wouldn't have put in all the shotgun mix but it was a learning process and we've worked out what, what works for us here. We're still learning. Messina I'm hoping has a fit on that area to sort of provide some nitrogen and some better feed quality and so we'll keep playing with it is the plan. Sheep are a challenge for everyone at the break of the season, so we, we generally try and shift them around to get the best use out of the stubbles and then put them into confinement feeding. Confinement feeding sort of has been really helpful for us in that it takes the pressure off of management during seeding to sort of get the best knockdown we can. And as, as sort of seeding progresses, they end up in small holding paddocks, uh, salt areas and even laneways if, if it comes to that. You know, not greater than 15 hectares for 600 odd sheep to just try and stop them walking around and just get them off, get them off those cropping paddocks so we can get ryegrass and weeds up and away so we can get a good knockdown and to spell the um, pasture paddocks before they go out on those to try and get a decent amount of food before they go out, which is not rocket science or anything new, but it really sets up paddocks. As far as the future goes, we want to keep managing this farm particularly so it's it's better when in 10 years rather than it is today and I think through that we're probably just going to continue to use those perennials like the tall wheat grass and probably more so the lucerne to try and manage um, those soils that are still able to be cropped and get better production out of them but I guess the goal through here is to you know stabilise the salinity and and still make a profit at the same time.